The Story of the White Stork King Once upon a time, there was a young king named Mai Tuan, who ruled a prosperous country called Mai Lang. The king views his people as his children and has a very pleasant personality. The king had a very loyal servant named Bang Tu. Bang Tu has a long beard that almost touches the ground. Bang Tu often stays by the king's side and never leaves. The king loved him very much. One day, after King Mai Tuan finished lunch, he noticed Bang Tu was sad, because after a while he sighed again. Feeling strange, the king asked, Khan, what's so sad? Your Majesty. Your Majesty is truly ingenious. Your Majesty knows all my feelings. Your Majesty, although you have been very generous to me for a long time, today I do not dare to ask for your favor anymore, so I am sad. Unfortunately, this morning, a Chet came into the city, bringing with him many treasures that I did not have enough money to buy. That's all it takes to make you sad. The king smiled Khan told that Chet to come here. Whatever Khan wants, I buy it and how much I pay for it. Bang Tu really liked it, thank you profusely. A military officer searched throughout the city and led Uncle Chet in. The king said, if there is anything in the casket, open it and see. While asking the king, he noticed and commented on Uncle Chet. His body was also small and cute, but his eyes were very sharp. He was dressed in rags and emaciated. Uncle Chet finished bowing and opened the box. The king exclaimed, Oh my God! So beautiful! Indeed, in the casket there are many beautifully carved jade jewelry, sparkling diamond rings. Bang to told the king, Your Majesty. Is that beautiful? The king nodded, very beautiful. Uncle Chet heard the king's praise, smiled and pulled out a small black box from the bottom, offering it to the king. Your majesty, he said while bowing. His head was lowered so that the king could not see that he was pale, this was truly precious. I can buy it directly from Mech D. Co. It is so precious that I am sure that all the treasures in the world put together would not be as valuable. I bought it at a very high price and according to the seller, I have never opened it once. I am sure that there is a precious treasure in here that is unique on earth. The king and Bang to heard this and bowed their heads to see. In the opened box, there were only a few very fine black seeds. On the top was a very thin piece of paper, with some very strange words on it. How strange! Strange! The king muttered. What is this? Uncle Chet trembled. I don't know clearly, I only know that they are very precious. I don't know how to read these words, Bang Tu, if you can read them. Please read them to me. Your Majesty, I am sorry, I don't understand a word. Let me invite Mandarin the Lamb in, he must be able to read it. After a while, Mandarin the Lamb came in. The king said, Hey the Lamb, take this piece of paper and read it. If you read it, I will reward you. If you can't read it, keep your soul and I'll give you twenty. Quan the lamb trembled in fear, but when he saw the paper, he was immediately happy. Your Majesty, this is Latin. I would like to read it for Your Majesty to hear. Whoever meets this treasure is the happiest person in the world. We must thank God and Buddha for their blessings. Just a handful of these small seeds is enough to be as happy as a thousand. Just breathe a little bit of this powder into your nose and say, Mui Ta Bo, and you can transform yourself into an animal according to your wish and can speak and hear the animal's voice. 
When you need to regain your original form, you just have to face the West. Lean in and read three times. Mui ta bo, and immediately return to your human body. But be careful. If you turn into a species while if the creature laughs once, it will forget those three mysterious words and will never be able to return to its original form, and will live forever like that. After hearing the reading, the king was so happy. Hey but lamb, I forbid you to tell anyone anything about this. If you reveal this, I will behead you. Go find the warehouse keeper and come here for me. Tell him to stuff you with two full bundles of gold. And returning to Bang Tu, the king smiled. We have to experiment, sir. Bang Tu hastily replied, Your Majesty, that's right. We have to experiment now, your majesty will only turn into an animal for a while. Who knows? Who can understand? The king shrugged, I don't need your advice. Follow me quickly. We go to the royal garden to play. There must be some animals here. An hour later, the king and Bang to entered the garden without any soldiers serving them. The king looked around and told Bang to, I don't see a single bird. Do we have to go to the stables? But no. The king does not need to go to the stables. On the other side, is a lotus pond, full of fragrant lotus blooms. The white turtle is intently looking for prey. A fourth one puffed out its chest and walked boldly on its long, lanky legs, looking for frogs. That's it. Your Majesty. Looking at the way those storks walk and their looks, their stories must be very funny. The king happily said, Great. Hey Bang Tu. Very good. You are such a loyal servant. Transform. Oh my god. How much fun. But remember Bang Tu, remember to memorize the method of reappearing your true form. If you forget, you'll be miserable. Just turn to the west, tilt your body and recite, Mui Ta Bo, three times to reveal your true form, sir. Your Majesty. You are so right. It's hard not to remember. Those are children. King Mai Tuan pulled out a box full of powder from his pocket, took a little bit and gave it to Bang Tu and took a little bit for himself. When they inhaled the powder into their noses, the two of them read three magical words. Suddenly, a quick change occurred. Quick and unexpected, two long legs and two wide wings. There are real feathers instead of legs, arms and faces. Their faces gradually grow longer until they become two very long beaks. The king and Bang to have completely transformed into white storks. The king was extremely happy. Hey Bang Tu, do you see how beautiful I am? Rub. Your beak is so long, as long as your beard before. Bang Tu leaned over and used his beak to preen his feathers. Your majesty is truly blessed. Being a king is the same as being a stork. Your Majesty's appearance is always extremely majestic. I'm sure those storks won't be afraid of us anymore, because we're already their kind. The king was impatient. Hurry, let's get close to them, because I am yearning and don't know if I can hear the voice of the stork. King Ko and his minister County only needed to take a few steps on their lanky legs to reach the lotus pond. Strange. The clicking of the stork's beaks suddenly became a voice that both King and I could hear clearly, thanks to the stork's ears. A stork said, Hey! Miss Long Legs. The lake water is so clear today. There are also many fake toads. This. Please taste a little of this, it's delicious. Ms. Long Kang is a young woman with fur as white as snow. 
She wiped her beak on both wings and replied, I don't need to eat or drink anything, sister. I just came here to cool off. My mother told me that tomorrow there will be my ancestor's death anniversary. I have to get ready to dance tomorrow to celebrate the guests coming to visit. Sister. Hey sister. I know a very good dance, called the Lotus Dance. Hey there. Try dancing for me. She dances blandly. Sometimes it crouches down, sometimes it rises up. Its wings flap rhythmically and its long neck bends in an easy-to-laugh way, so much so that both the king and his teacher couldn't help but burst out laughing. The laughter was so unexpected, causing the storks to panic and suddenly flap their wings and fly away. Ah! 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 The king jumped for joy. Hey Bang Tu! I have never seen anything more fun than that. What a pity, if we hadn't laughed out loud, maybe we could hear them talk more now, how much fun it would be. But the stork banged to suddenly panicked. Dead. Dead. Your Majesty, do you remember those three magical words? Three words that every time you want to reappear in your original form, you have to read them three times. I thought for a while but couldn't remember. Die. According to the instructions, while transforming, you must not laugh once. Otherwise you will forget those three words. Your Majesty. But I, forgot. The king trembled. Dead. I also forgot those three words. Hey, please remember. If you want. Dot. To see your true form again, you have to turn. Dot. To the west, lean in and read. Dot. And read. Dot. Read three times. Mui. Dot. Ghost. Dot. Dreams, words am I. Mo. Dot. Mo. Dot. Bang to searched in frustration. Mui. Ma. Dot. Mo. Dot. M I. Mo. Mo. M I. Mo. Dot. Really dead, your majesty. The two of them tried searching for more than an hour in their minds for those three words savior, but could not remember them. Hour after hour, the two storks kept turning their faces towards the setting sun, stopping their necks to search for a word. Frustrated, until exhausted, the two guys were so tired, they lay down on the ground. We're going to die. Bang to shook his head, groaned and cried. The king suddenly became bold and in control of himself. Shut up, Bang to. Lamenting and crying is weakness. Endure your punishment courageously. If we are suffering like this, we must have done bad things a long time ago. Crying is useless. Now only the country is happy with its fate. Even though I'm a stork, I'm still happy. Stork, with two wide wings, we can fly freely in the blue sky. While flying, we also feel like we rule. Let's go find a place to rest, because it's almost dark. Tomorrow, we will fly over the city to see how the people are doing when they hear about our disappearance. Bang to walks step by step, quietly following the stork king, sighing deeply. The night fell quietly and sadly, sadly with the two storks. Tomorrow, the two teachers and students flew over my Lang city and cried out in sorrowful voices. Passers-by heard the cry, pointed to each other and said, That's an evil omen, a bad omen for the country. In the afternoon, the stork king and Bang to learned that news of the king's disappearance had spread far and wide across the country. Many times, my two kings flew to land on the roof of the royal palace, deliberately making the mandarins and people know that, this I am your king. 
But, who can believe the words of birds? There is only one way. Remember the three magical words to reveal your true form. The two kings and servants of the stork family were so hungry that they looked for fruit to eat and put their beaks into the lake to drink. At night, I sleep on a tree branch. They don't dare eat lizards or frogs. How can they? Like other storks, this group eats frogs deliciously. For more than a week, the two storks lived miserably like that. Then one day, the scene of my Lang City suddenly became unusually bustling. The roads were flagged, gates were erected everywhere. Dot. Dot. A great procession took place in the city. Soldiers with swords and spears walked in fourths and drums and trumpets were blaring. In the middle of the procession, a young man sitting on horseback, surrounded by solemn and enthusiastic guardians, King Mai Tuan shouted, That is the son of my enemy. That's Cash No, the son of Mai Jia, who brought troops to invade our country and was defeated by us. He swore to take revenge on me. He plotted to deceive me so that he could usurp my throne. The petty soldier. The king sobbed, frustrated. Bang to nodded. That's it. Chet, it's one of them who disguised himself and tricked me. The army is really disgusting. The king was sad. Let's go. Hey Bang Tu. My Lang land is no longer our land. They have taken it over. Let's go. I am going to the land of Mexico. If we go there, our misfortune will be somewhat relieved. Perhaps I can meet a wizard who can free me from the yoke. So the teacher and his students said goodbye to my Lang city and flapped their wings to fly back to Mech D. Co. They weren't used to flying, so after only a few hours their wings were tired. Your Majesty, let me rest for a bit. Your Majesty flies so fast. Afternoon has also come. Then, my king, let me rest here tonight. Let's go find a shelter. Yes. On that hill there is an ancient tower that has been destroyed. I landed there and slept for the night. The two kings and I flew up to the tower. In the tower, there is a damp, dark room. Suddenly, bang to stop the king. Have you heard anything, your majesty? Bang to whispered. It seems like someone is sobbing. The king raised his ears to listen. There is the sound of someone crying. Strange. Let me go in and see. Don't be reckless, your majesty. This place must not be peaceful. Let's go find another place to take shelter. But the king did not listen and advanced. Bang to quickly used his muzzle to pull the king's wings back. But the king had already come forward. A few feathers stuck to Bang Tu's mouth. Ah, it hurts. Don't pluck my feathers. It's dark inside. The wailing sound became clearer and more like a human voice. Looking closely, the king only saw a huge owl inside. The king boldly asked, Who is crying in there? The owl suddenly jumped in surprise and when he saw two storks, he cried out, Two storks. Two storks. Oh my god. I was saved. The stork king was extremely surprised, because the owl spoke with a human voice, but spoke clearly. My Tuan asked, Why? Why do you cry, but you can speak human language, owl? I believe that you have the same fate as us. Have you been so foolish as to take the form of an owl? Tell me quickly. The owl wiped his tears in two dark ways, bowed his head in greeting and replied, I don't know who you are, Mr. Stork, but hearing his voice, I knew he was one of the suffering people. And people told me that one day, if there is happiness in becoming a human again, 
that happiness will also come from a stork. Therefore, seeing the two of you, I suddenly felt happy. Oh my god, I can't help you. And when you hear me tell our story, you will see that our pain is such an immense suffering that we have nothing more to offer you than pity. The king then told his story. And bang to let the owl listen. After listening, the owl sighed. I see that our fates have a similar relationship. If your majesty is the king, then I am Princess Fuang Chao, the only daughter of the king of India. That guy Cash No, who murdered your majesty, originally came to ask me to be his wife. But my father thought he was a bad person, so he kicked him out the door. Humiliated, he tried to disguise himself as a servant in the palace and tried to give him that devil's box to trick her. So I was tricked, turned into an owl, and while the maid was looking for me everywhere, she carried me up to this tower, threw me here and said, You have to stay here until someone comes. Here and willing to ask you to be my wife. That's the only way you can show your true form again. But I'll hide it from anyone that you're here. You'll stay here for the rest of your life, grow old and die. Like other owls. Then stop hating your guy. After saying that, he left. I can't go anywhere here because my legs are tied loosely. For more than three months now, I have had to live here silently, without seeing heaven and earth. To eat, eat bats, mice, moss and rocks. And your majesty, my fate is much more miserable than yours. Your majesty still has friends and can fly everywhere, but I have to stay here for the rest of my life. How strange, the king muttered. Our fates are the same. It must have something to do with this. Probably so, your majesty. I received this retribution because I had mixed up with my royal mother once before. I'm sure. What is your majesty's fault? So where are you going now? We went to Mech D. Co. to ask for help. He shook his head, then suddenly his eyes lit up exceptionally brightly. I thought that your majesty and the high officials didn't come to Mech D. Co. to work. What else? I have a way to save your majesty and high officials and there is always a chance to save me too. The king hastily. How? How? Bang to was also hasty. How? How? Every month Cash knows subordinates meet near here, at the castle on the other side of the hill. They party and tell stories about the fun they've had for a month. Perhaps while telling the story, they will mention those three mysterious words that your majesty has forgotten. If you remember, tonight is the night they gather. King Mai Tuan happily jumped up. Princess. Princess. How much fun. She is the one who saved our lives. Quickly, please show me the way to the castle. Bang Tu, cut off the rope tying her leg for me. Princess, please show me the way. The two storks pleaded. But the princess's face was serious. I save you too, but I have to set a condition. If you too obey, I will go. The king hastily said, I will accept any conditions. What do you need? I want your majesty to help me return to my original form. I said that only when someone wants to accept me as his wife will I be able to escape this evil owl mantle. Then, your majesty, if you or a high official promise to be my husband. The king pulled Bang Tu away and whispered, Hey Bang Tu, now is the time for you to show your loyalty to me. You will marry the princess. Bang to shook and trembled. Your majesty. Your majesty, do you want your wife? To gouge out your eyes when I return? It's very fierce. If he sees me bringing the princess back, he will die with him. 
Your Majesty should remember that I have a wife and children. Moreover, I am old. Your Majesty is young, unmarried and deserves to marry a princess more than me. The princess is young and beautiful. Dot. But I am old, with a long beard that touches the ground. Dot. Who told you that the princess is young and beautiful? Not sure. The king sadly stroked his feathers and thought dreamily. There is no doubt that she is young and beautiful. Maybe this time I will buy a cat in a bag. Your Majesty, Bang to replied politely but firmly, I can only say, it is better to be a stork for the rest of my life than to take a concubine home as my wife. My lord, she tortured me very hard. If your majesty knew the character of my wife. Dot. Dot. The teacher and student argued for a while longer and in the end the king had to accept the owl as his wife. It is said that the house the king agreed, Princess Fuang Chao was very happy. We will be able to show our true form soon. This very day Cash No held a party. They must have started to party by now. Let's go quickly. After saying that, the owl went ahead, flying heavily but quickly. The two storks hastily followed. Arriving at the castle, the princess used her beak to point at a small door so that the two storks could fly up and perch and look inside the banquet room. My Tuan and Bang to gently flew and landed on the door, leaning on their ears and eyes to look. Listen. In the room, there is a beautiful scene. The candles were bright, the dining table was filled with smoke. Around the table, there were more than sixty of them. Among the group, the king saw the old Chet. This Chet was telling the story of Bang Tu and Mai Tuan. We came at just the right time, King Mai Tuan thought and shuddered. If it's a little slow, what's the point in life? Dear Buddha, please remember to thank him. And the two teachers and students listened with all four ears. Laughter echoed in the room when they heard Chet's storytelling voice begin to sound humorous. One of them asked, Great! So cool! So how did you get into the palace and what are those words that are so mysterious? Out here, the king and Bang to remained silent, not daring to move a feather. What words? A Latin word is very difficult to remember, but once we forget it, we cannot remember it again. That's the word, mui ta bio. Hearing this, the two storks didn't listen anymore and rushed down so quickly that the owl had to fly really fast to keep up. Princess, the king said happily, so lucky. So before I return to my true form, I would like to reiterate my promise. I will accept the princess as my wife to repay this eternal favor. After speaking, the king turned to face the west, leaned over and read, Mui Ta Mo, three times. Bang to also imitated the king. Moments later, the two of them reappeared. Mai Tuan, a handsome king, and Bang Tu, a courtier with a long beard. The two looked at each other with joy and were so touched, teacher and student hugged each other and cried. After crying, the king suddenly remembered the owl. But, how happy! When he turned to look, the king did not see an owl but only saw a princess as beautiful as a fairy the most beautiful princess in the world that one could not imagine. She wore gorgeous clothes and the smile on her lips was brighter for the king than her most beautiful jewelry. Princess Fuang Chao knelt down. Your Majesty. Is your Majesty still afraid of buying a cat in a bag? The king was embarrassed because he had spoken a bit too loudly for the princess to hear. But he was happy, helped the princess up and kissed her hand, 
If in the future I mention the happiest plight of my life, I will say that it was the plight in which I was transformed into the life of a white stork. No longer slow. Late, King and Princess Fuang Chao and Bang to set out. Selling one of his robes, the king bought three horses, prepared an entourage to look royal and all three rode back to my Lang Citadel. The king was welcomed with all the enthusiasm of the people. Dot. The way no usurped the throne had announced the death of the king. Now seeing the king's return, the whole people were filled with joy beyond madness. The way no was arrested, the usurper was sentenced. One was suicide, the other was to suffer death. Stork life. So Cash No had to inhale a little devil powder into his nose and turn to the west. Mui Ta Bo. He turned into a stork, living his whole life in the royal garden keeping the life of a white stork. His karma has been caused, now he tries to bear it without anyone complaining. The king is on the throne again, the people are at peace again. The masses held a party to celebrate for seven days. The king ordered the sinners to be forgiven and held a wedding ceremony with Princess Fuang Chao. One day the king remembered the past and smiled and said to Bang Tu, Do you remember, Khan, do you remember our stork life? I couldn't help but laugh when I saw Khan craning his neck to the west and stammering, Mui Ma. Dot. No. Mo. Dot. Dot quote dot. Khan's appearance at that time was truly miserable. Bang to smiled softly, leaned into the king's ear and whispered, Your Majesty, don't mock me too much. Otherwise, I will tell the story of the argument between you and me on the tower the other day. Dot. Queen. If you knew that your majesty, the queen towards me is ugly, old, and has a long beard, then the queen would be very sad to you. The king hurriedly said, Oh, don't say anything, sir. Let's talk about something else. Dot. Dot. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.